Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of European of Asalis 4. We are playing some more with Marley, and it is currently saying that this is an old save game because we have now pushed for everyone the new update, which should mean that crashes are massively reduced, uh, personal union aggressive expansion has been fixed, and... Huzzah! For people that didn't have Conquest of Paradise, uh, army tradition will no longer give dev cost. Not dev cost reduction, dev cost increase. So the, the better your army, the more expensive it got to develop things up. So there you go. <clears throat> uh, CLK, thank you very much for the 12 month resubscription. Very much appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 12 months, that is, if my calculations are correct, one year. And one year means you have just earned the golden wings. Huzzah! Wait, did, how, how did that one get messed up in the code? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not even sure how we found that that was the... Oh no, it says in the tooltip that that was the issue, but yeah. Um, something to do with, like, we changed how tribal development works. And that was somehow linked to normal development, and then that got tied to... Um, I don't know. I don't know. Hey Maud, did you already figure out the gen... Peace bug from today's YouTube video before I posted it. No, I haven't had a chance to uh, check it yet, Doc Reaver. Stream's frozen on... Stream is just a starting screen. Restart, Kalin. Or, um, refresh, Kalinas. It shouldn't be. Spaghetti code, yeah, probably. Anyway, we are currently playing as Marley. And we have been slowly but surely eating up our neighbours to the uh, more central part of Africa. Basically trying to f solidify this region against Portugal and any of the Europeans before they decide to encroach. We are currently the 8th greatest power. We should be a lot higher on this list except for, of course, the... No, we caught up on tech. No, we haven't. We don't have colonialism. However, the northern neighbours of Telefat do. Oh, that's Portugal. And unfortunately, it doesn't spread to the colonial regions uh, until I think they've actually embraced it. So Portugal must not have embraced it yet. But that does mean that technology, military tech in particular, is going to get increasingly more expensive. Although we do have the Renaissance... So, catching up with things like Park and Shot should be easier. They are currently on Miltech 10. So we are three military technologies behind them at the moment. Which is a little concerning. If we do ever go to war with the Portuguese, who are currently our rival, we are going to need a lot of manpower. And considering we are still having a lot of issues with rebels, that is going to be a challenge. Now we do control... 41% of the Ivory Coast in terms of trade. Unfortunately, Portugal have taken the Cape Coast. They have not yet taken the Gold Coast. But I think we're going to need to let them actually colonize this and then take it off of them once that happens. But we do have Benin. That was the most recent acquisition for us. And then, of course, we have Gabu over here, which is already a world port. So that's all looking rather good. <coughs> Basically, when Tonghai sieges down, Jen event pops up that gives them Jen as a free vassal. Oh! Interesting. Hence the automatic peace deal. Hmm. No wonder they were so eager to join that fight. And it's a bit weird that me as a war leader doesn't get a message saying that. It just it looks like a bug because they just peace out. And get them as a free vassal. Alright, so. Um, our army is currently down here. We are allied with Noop. These guys are a bit terrified of us. We are allied to Kano. Katsina would be... Actually, these guys are getting close. Oh, you would accept vassalization. Interesting. And that wouldn't cost me another relation slot. So I'd need to improve relations with you, which we absolutely can do. 
So we are going to go ahead and improve relations with Kano so we can get you peacefully. And Gobir would accept an alliance, but they would not accept vassalization yet. And Bonoman, too far away. So Bonoman we would need to actually siege, I think. Right, let's send our armies home, because I think we may have just finished another fight. We'll go ahead and put you back on to Rebel Smashing. Alright, let's do this. Zazu wants a royal marriage. Oyo wants a royal marriage. None of whom I am actually particularly friendly with. Although getting one with Zazu may not be the worst idea. No, Zazu I don't think I'm going to be able to diplo vassalize, but Katsina, maybe. They're trying to get royal marriage here so I don't attack them. Not going to happen, I'm afraid. Uh-uh-uh. Since you missed the last two streams, I believe judging by the map, you're now consolidated and there are no more. Why, I'm pending doom! Disasters. No, we're actually relatively stable. In fact, I'd almost go so far as to say that we are, in every sense of the term, strong and stable. Strong and stable. Strong and stable. Strong and stable. We are definitely strong and stable. Yep, strong and stable. And don't take it as me sounding like I'm trying to convince myself of this fact. <laughs> Alright, let's put you guys on unrest reduction. There we go, perfection. Enemy sieging our province, but we should go and beat them up. Unfortunately, the separatists did get there first. And we are starting to get a little bit of manpower back again. So we are actually currently spying on Zazu. I think that was with the intention of claiming their stuff. And then I think with my third diplomat, we're going to start spying on Canon Bruneau because I would like to start taking them out. Although, actually, Canon Bruneau is not the most important. Hmm, unfortunately, Noop is. Well, if we manage to grow bigger than Noop, then we might be able to diplo-vassalize them, because we're already actually at 50, although that's mostly just because our trust is so high. Diplo-reputation, I don't think is... Actually, I just integrated someone. No, we've already lost that modifier. Drat. Sindrin, thank you very much for the bits. Very much appreciate that. I asked people what their favourite natural disaster was. Avalanches won by a landslide. <laughs> Growth of the business of ivory carvings. Our efforts to maximise trading profits in the area of Zhen has borne fruit in the province of Haier. Entrepreneurs managed to greatly increase the output of ivory carvings and have found new markets for our capital in the processed goods. Awesome. Now, we are still really heavily in debt. Like, really heavily, actually. Um, we should probably try to do something about this. Because this is costing me a lot of money and interest. Good grief. Yeah, we definitely want to do something about that. Conversion successful. We can continue converting. Definitely shouldn't have gone the path of tolerance. That was really stupid. I'm going to keep on saying that because it's going to keep on coming up. Military access from Castile. You know what? While you have access, you're not going to declare war on me. They're at war with Portugal. So Castile and Portugal are not friends anymore. They're at war with France. Uh, <laughs> uh.
So I'll be able to take these provinces, but I won't be able to take the Cape Coast. Because I can't core it because we don't have anything adjacent. Can I claim it? Wait, no. I can core it. It's not going to be that far away from here. Although I could not core Benin. It's only two sea zones away. Surely that's in coring range. Why would you want to see Europe? You want to see Europe. Terrible place. Hey Mordred, two questions. Playing as Congo, my troops are struggling with morale versus European troops. Like game, what can I do to improve this? How confident are you that No Step Back is QA tested and polished enough? I can't say anything about No Step Back because I frankly don't know. Um, I am not part of the Heart of Iron team. I'm part of the EU4 team. Uh, and as for struggling with morale, I mean... Do you have tech parity? That would be the main question. And then otherwise, taking things like diplo uh, sorry, um, defensive ideas would help you with that. Colonial range. Yeah, but colonial range is going to be... It's in range. I can get to we add. But I cannot get to these. Okay. Good suggestion. Is this war over? I know, let's go to country. Current wars. The Castilian conquest of Labor. So this is Castile going after England. Castile and France though. Portugal's gonna get absolutely stomped. Although the AI has gotten a lot better at naval invasions. They are allied to Sweden and England, so they might be able to do some damage. But honestly, Castile and France is just a death pact. So let's stop spying on Canem Renault and start spying on Portugal. And see if we can get some claims on their stuff. Conversion complete. Good stuff. Carry on. Great expectations. A political marriage is much a union as it is a contract of mutual support. The Salma family expects the great Munzer will heed the advice of the Empress and actively look after their and his interests. Um, no. <laughs> no. And yeah, we've only just started improving relations. We're definitely going to hit 190. So I think what my plan here is to vassalize Kano and then start this war. The family is left behind. We will go ahead and ease the tax burden because we're actually making a decent amount of cash right now. And then with this, we are going to start paying off some of these loans because I do not want to be paying that interest. And this is giving good opportunity for my armies to start recovering some numbers. Because we are about to take a bit of a risk here. Oh man, my force limit is 62 now? Wow, as my country recovers from all of the crazy amounts of autonomy that we've been burdened with... Um, recovery is actually going pretty well. Let's go ahead and drop those. And you, and you. And the rest of these are not really worth doing. Okay. So yeah, we're going to be able to maintain some absolutely vast military. One of my generals just died. Let's go ahead and replace you with another. Not really going to care about the quality at this juncture, I don't think. So we just need your relations to get to 190 and then boom, vassalize. Uh, Tafalit wants my maps. You know what? I'll accept because I want your prestige. Please and thank you. Oh yeah, do we have any other... Yeah, we have a couple of buildings actually that would be pretty good to put up. Um, go ahead and do it. Let's put you in Gabu and build those two temples when we can afford them. Although actually all of these buildings are going to be magnificently expensive. But I kind of want to save points right now so I don't get unbalanced technology. 
We'll wait on the Miltech until I know for sure that we need it. I will, however, state everything. What's my governing capacity right now? We're under it. Agent Nzazu was found, but that's okay, because what we can now do is... No, we can't actually fabricate anything else, so you may as well head home. And Portugal is almost ready to be claimed. There it is. Clifada. So now we have a conquest CV against the Portuguese. Fez looks like it's under siege. Lisboa's under siege. Portugal is immediately striking back by claiming my stuff. Still Miltech 10. Again, we're waiting until that hits 190. Army reformer died. That's annoying. Oh, no it's not. We can get another morale of armies guy. To do it. Do it! Both Miltechs are a 21, your morale is 4.6, and theirs is 6.2. I mean, national ideas are going to play a factor. If you're fighting against someone like France, they are always going to out-morale you, and you just kind of have to be used to or accept that fact. Uh, defensive ideas, as I've said, helps. Uh, army tradition helps a lot. So if they have a lot more army tradition than you do, then that's going to be a contributing factor. Prestige helps. So the more prestige you have, the more morale buff you get. As you can see from my 9 prestige right now, I get plus 0.9 morale. So you can get up to 10. I think you get 20 from army tradition. That's actually a really big factor. Because right now I'm getting plus 7.9 from my 30. Another general question, if I have two traders, is it ever, as a rule of thumb, worth it to... Let one add to the flow, or mostly better to collect from somewhere each. No, it's almost never better to collect from two places. It's nearly always better to flow and then collect in one spot. However, I will say that I am actually currently... Oh no, I'm not anymore. I was for a little while collecting in two places because I didn't have much control of the Ivory Coast, but it was a much stronger trade node. Now, however, I do have control over the Ivory Coast, so I'm flowing from... The trade node which I dominate, which is Timbuktu, pushing all of that money into the Ivory Coast and then collecting it here. Although a fair amount of it is escaping to Portugal at the moment, so we need to close that. XTG Gamer, can you play Ark? Remember me? I do remember you. Hello, how are you doing? Okay, so we can get another economic idea. Do I want to, though? No, I think I want to save up for the technology. I know it's another idea group. Maybe we'll take a military one. And we can also build another building, which I think I would like to do. Let's go ahead and build another mosque. Gotta keep that money coming in. One eighty seven. One eighty nine. Come on, Kano. 191. So, Kano, I would like to offer you a one-time offer of vassalization into the glorious kingdom of Mali. Empire of Mali, in fact. I forget. We are now an empire. Glorious. Okay, so that's done. How close are we to getting Katsina? If we improve our relations with them, then maybe... You can stop improving relations. And we can start working on Katsina instead. And I think I probably do want to make an alliance with you. Oh, Oyo is a vassal. Oh, that's why they wanted to get a royal marriage. I'm sorry, Oyo. That one I will definitely accept. I thought you were a random nation over here or something, but apparently not. And then Katsina... I think I'm going to Royal Marriage and ally you as well. Because that's going to increase the chance of you arriving. This is going to put us over the Diplo relations, but I think that this is a pill worth us swallowing. 
The Dimmies flout building restrictions despite being officially prohibited from constructing houses of worship and tall buildings. The Dimmies in several provinces of our realm are openly disobeying our laws. How many of our quaddies are too lax to respond? Either because they see no harm in it or because of the hefty bribes they earn for turning a blind eye. So we can get more towards legalism or mysticism. We are... St uh, yes, we do still want to try and build up the corruption reduction. So let's go for the legalism. And we'll get you converting. And we're almost done with all the conversions already. A bunch more cores. There's Katsina's Royal Marriage, which I will accept. And yeah, you are now only 10 points away. And honestly, building up your trust would probably get you to vassalize. Particularly if I continue expanding into Portugal now. And Portugal is pretty much fully occupied at this point, so I would say it is probably safe. To start positioning our armies. We can state some more stuff, please do. How much gold are we making now? 12.06. That's our third most profitable income ahead of trade. And that's before we've even got the, the gold privilege. Which is, what was it? Gold and ivory, right? So what I need to do is... Up oh, we need the trade station. And Futa Jalon, which was over here. And trade station tech level was 14. So we're still a ways away from being able to do that. Is it true there won't be any expansion three for again, but only flavor packs and stuff? I can't say solidly for certain because I don't have that ability but as far as I know the intention right now is immersion packs going forwards that's what Johan's dev diary said today unfortunately European of Asylum 4 has kind of reached the age where it's really difficult to add new features because it just makes it really unwieldy like the whole freezing provinces I know it's a super unpopular decision but if you look at the performance changes like even over the last three expansions where provinces were added it is a significant difference in terms of how quickly the game runs which is why that decision was made and that kind of spills over into other areas as well like unfortunately we're just kind of at the edge of what this engine can do all right so portugal is still in this war still getting absolutely thrashed england refuses it's time, Portugal, you snake. And let's also tech up in Miltech, just in case. And we can also do admin so we don't get the time penalty. And now we need to think about what we want to get next. So we need to get a diplomatic idea or a military idea. I would say that this probably wants to be military. And ordinarily, my gut is to go towards better armies as opposed to bigger armies. But we're going to be so fabulously wealthy that bigger armies might actually be an option. Quantity, go full Russia. No, I, I, I kind of want to restrict myself from exploration because I want to let the Europeans get have time to get a foothold. So exploration I might pick as like a third or a fourth, or better yet I'll take expansion. And in fact expansion might actually be a better option here. No, it's not. It's an admin idea. I don't think I'm going to take exploration. If I take anything it's going to be expansion. <clears throat> so the options here I think are going to be trade. Although... The benefits of that are going to be somewhat limited. Offensive 
for the extra discipline, the extra siege ability, and the better generals. Defensive, because of the morale buff, which would be very useful fighting against Europeans, actually. That might actually allow us to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We'll take huge casualties, but we're a pretty big nation and we'll have the home advantage. So defensive might be a good option. Especially uh, because we are wealthy enough to start building a lot of forts. And that is something I had intended to start doing. Quality, I don't think is going to be for us, or quantity. So I think the options here are offensive, defensive, quantity, trade. So let's go ahead and make a poll. New result. Which So we've got offensive, defensive, quantity, and trade. And personally, of those, I would say that defensive and quantity are probably the best options. Probably defensive first. Because it's... Because of the forts. We're going to want to fight a fairly defensive war if we do get attacked. Offensive for att attrition for the enemy. Offensive doesn't cause attrition. Defensive does. Oh, and the other question is policies. So, together with trade, is trade efficiency and production efficiency? It'd be better if it was goods produced because of the gold. Defensive is unrest and stability cost. Offensive is artillery combat ability. And quantity is dev cost and land force limit modifier. Quantity and economic is a really good combo. Which just kind of doubles down on the whole quantity aspect. Economic and naval is goods produced. That's interesting. How oh, they changed the name of native ideas to indigenous ideas. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking... Um, same options, but now we have a bit more information. I think that of these, quantity is probably first, defensive second, and then offensive trade behind that. So, get your votes in. Vote, vote, vote. What idea group do you think we should adopt as our second option? Uh, the one advantage, actually, of trade is the fact it uses Diplo, which we need a lot less of than military, because we need to keep up with military tech, and because of our institution issue, it's going to be a lot shorter. So we're not going to be able to get as many military ideas as we will Diplo, probably. Haven't had any issues in vanilla, but did notice in Ambanar, whenever the leak war starts, my game slows down a lot, even when I don't even see that part of the map myself yet. Yes, yeah, because of all the CPU decisions being made about moving troops around en masse. It's the uh, pathfinding. That's what causes much of the performance problem. AI pathing. Is there a reason why quantity economy is the meta in multi... Oh, there is a reason why quantity economy... Is a matter of multiplayer and playing with the other ideas. Fair, I didn't know that. <laughs> it kind of shows how often I take quantity. This might actually be like one of the only times I think I've ever taken it. I just don't like quantity usually. And that's generally because I run a fairly fine balance on what my economy can afford versus the size of my military. But here as Mali, I suspect we can maintain a pretty damn big army. Always nice to arrive and have an immediate poll. Heck yeah. Quantity and economic is a minus 30 dev cost. Yeah, we're just going to need the monic points to actually afford to do that. <laughs> Quantity first, Netherlands second. <laughs> I get that reference. I haven't seen that video in years. Okay, so the vote is in. The last Spartan contributed 15,000 channel points. Thank you very much for that. So offensive came in last with a, frankly, offensive 2%. Then we have trade coming in third. They weren't able to get the trade-off that they were looking for. Then we've got defensive in the secondary bastion at 33%. But overall, the one with the highest quantity is quantity with 62 Quantity it is. Okay. 
I know you do, that's why I mentioned it, was watching the Netherlands House Fine 4 vid where you share the video. Nice. Quantity trade, 20% goods produced. Really? Really? That's 20% more gold. And it was naval, right? So I do think we probably do want to be stacking as much goods produced as we can. 